helpless grace when we fail, claim the gift of God's mercy. We are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace. Peace be with you. Peace now. Peace be with you. Oh, I need to bend the way back. Peace. Who? Did you read her? Yeah, okay. No, I don't read. Peace. Would you, would you go over to the parsonage, sorry to do this, and get an egg and a bowl to crack it in? Peace be with you. Okay. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. I found him in a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, your morn shall rise, and all your day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, I'd give up to be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy. Let us pray. 
You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Euphraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope today. I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Read responsibly Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell the Lord that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Let us stand for the gospel, those who are able. Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, to, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children singing in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. All right, are the kids out there? Where are the children?
There's one. Good. Anyone else? Any other kids? I, I, don't, I heard a voice out there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I got you, right? All right. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, right? So what do you think he meant by that? What's that? It's a yoke. Does he mean, he wants me to pour it on your head? Is that what, is that what he's saying? <laughs> take my yoke upon you, huh? No, no. I know. He was saying, we all ought to learn funny stories that make people laugh. You know, like, that was a great yoke. No, that's not it either, is it? Well, maybe he had something else in mind. Hey, you want to help me? Sure, come on. You can have that one. These are, you want to sit down? You can sit down if you want. These are yokes. And you know what they do? They, they, they connect two different, or two animals, two separate animals, like two mules or two horses or two uh, oxen. And then they would use the, the, the two of them to, to plow the fields. And it would kind of ease the burden on any one of them, each one of them, because there were two of them working together. And, and Jesus says, like this image, take my yoke upon you. Yeah. Let's see. Can you take one end? And I'll take the other end. Now, sometimes they, they, they put it on their shoulders. Sometimes it was longer, too, like that one down there. And, it, and they were yoked together so they could move together, right? Now, let's say you're at one end, all right? Take my yoke upon you, Jesus. You. Who do you think is at the other end? Jesus. That's why he called it my yoke. He shares the burden with us, the burdens that we face in life. And we can call on him and pray to him and just a sense of his presence and his love helps us. It strengthens us. It helps us endure all the things that life throws at us. It's a good yoke, isn't it? Huh? When Jesus is on the other end? Yeah, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus to us to bring to us the yoke, the yoke of your grace, the yoke of your forgiveness, the yoke of your love. Help us to share that yoke, to, to wear it ourselves, to be freed of our burdens, of grief, of guilt. And may we also share that yoke with others too. For that is how we wear the yoke of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. You can take. You, can, you want to take that? You want the big one? Okay. Go ahead. You can set it down. Oh, thank you, Josie, so much. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
There was a man by the name of James Moore. He wrote for a preaching helps book called sermons.com. And he had illustrations. And one of the illustrations was a story in which a man was driving down a country road, old dirt road, you know, and had all these ruts in it. And there was a sign that he came to, and the sign said, Choose your ruts carefully. You're going to be in them the next 20 miles. And Moore thought about that, and he says, You know, life can sometimes feel like that that we're driving in a rut, bouncing around, and all we want to do is survive. All we want to do is endure. All we want to do is cope because life has become such a burden. And then he quoted, more quoted a, a Peanuts cartoon in which Charlie Brown is talking to Linus. And he says, Linus, I'm going to live by a new philosophy of life. From now on, I'm only going to live in dread one day at a time. That's how it sometimes feels too, isn't it? We're in dread one day at a time, that's all. Jesus understood about burdens. He talks about them in our gospel lesson, for a matter of fact. Yeah. He says, uh, all those who are weary and heavy laden, come to me, and I will give you rest from your burdens. And then he says, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I wonder what that's like. Uh, what that's like living under, under the yoke of Jesus. Let's explore that just a little bit today. As we as disciples are called upon to take on ourselves the yoke of Jesus. Well, first of all, though, what are some of our burdens? What, are, what were some of the burdens in Jesus' day? Well, gosh, there was illness. They were possessed by demons. They were oppressed by uh, the Roman government. But Jesus was focusing on a burden that was more spiritual in nature, one that had to do with their connection with God and how they could feel burdened by that connection. You know, the, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes they took ten commandments, just ten, right? Confirmation, memorized ten. Made 613 laws out of them. Now think about that for your memory work. Huh? Think about that for even trying to observe all of them. Yeah. Pretty, pretty daunting task, isn't it? Yeah. And the problem was is that sometimes in obeying one of those laws, you ended up breaking another one. So it was kind of a no-win situation, and that was kind of the burden that the people were experiencing when it came to the law. When I was serving another church, family came to visit the church. Afterward, I went and visited them as my usual uh, pr process or practice. I usually just go to the door, knock, say hello, thank you for coming, hope you come again, real quick. But the father of the family invited me in. And I went and I sat down in a chair he indicated, and, and he says, I want to tell you a story, Pastor, a true story. See, the reason I was visiting your church, I've been vis we've been visiting churches in the area, because the church that we belong to, well, my daughter got ill, her medical bills became really expensive. And the church sent out a, a delegation, you know, we, th we thought to comfort us. And what they talked about was the fact that we had not kept up on our pledge. And uh, he said, that hurt us. Because uh, they said, you know, we, we promised, we promised. And he even advised us to go take out a loan from the bank so we could pay our pledge. That's 
piling on burden after burden, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. Gosh. How do you think Jesus deals with our burdens? What does he do? Well, first of all, he provides us help. As I was sharing with the Josie here, he gives us strength and comfort when we're in grief. He gives us strength when we are overwhelmed by not what God throws at us. You know that saying, God only gives us what we can where we can stand, he won't give us any more than that. It isn't God who does that. It's the world that gives us more than we can stand. God gives us the resources to help us deal with it. He helps us lift those burdens. Sometimes by the Spirit. Sometimes by sending us people who share the load with us. Of course, there are some things that are really difficult for us. For example, there was a, a, a boy and his father, they were walking down a road, and they saw this huge rock. And the boy asked his father, he said, Dad, do you think that if I used all my strength, I could move that rock? And the father said, yeah. I think if you used all of your strength, you could move that rock. The boy went over to the rock, and he began pushing and pushing and pushing. It, it, it didn't budge even a millimeter. And finally, he sat down on the rock, and he said, Dad, you were wrong. I can't do it. And his father said, did you use all your strength? And he said, yes, Dad, I used all my strength. And the father says, no, you didn't. You didn't ask me for help. And together they moved the stone. Yeah. Sometimes that's how God works, isn't it? People asking for help. I was conversing with a uh, young lady who was in the me medical field, and, uh, and I was uh, asking her about suicide. And, and I said, uh, why is it that more people don't turn for help? When they feel that way, why is it they don't turn to help? And she said two reasons, stigma and a lack of knowledge of the resources. There is still this kind of sense of shame around suicide. So they don't want people to know they even thought about it. And then even knowing where to get help, that's the other problem. Of course, there are some things that even with help, we just can't overcome them. We can't overcome death. There are some feelings that we can't let go of, at least at the moment. Feelings of anger, for instance. As a person, I can say, I can't, Jesus, I can't. But you can. Sometimes very defiantly and very stubbornly, I say, I won't. And Jesus says, but I will. I'll go to the cross for you. I'll take all of those burdens on myself and relieve you of them completely. That's part of wearing the yoke of Jesus. Of course, his yoke is actually a cross. Yeah, the cross. Jesus is right in the center, hanging on the cross, taking all of our burdens, and then there's two people on either end, even two thieves, if they were willing. He'll help them. He'll take their burdens. Yeah. You know, I wonder what would have happened if when that delegation came over to that man's house, if instead of saying what they did, they would have said, forget the tithe and we'll help you out. We'll help you get through this. 
We have been saved by Jesus. He's taken all our burdens from us and opened the way to salvation. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna share that with you. That's the yoke of Jesus. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers, the congregation's response after each petition to the words, hear us, O God, is your mercy is great. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God. God of creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. We pray for the Runge Conservation Nature Center, a place of refreshment and learning. Hear us, O oh God. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels to work for justice and mercy and reconciliation. 
Give leaders and members of every nation the integrity and courage to embrace truth in their particular circumstance and the power to draw closer to your good and gracious will for their people. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need and make your presence known among all who suffer. We pray for Carol Hayden, Clay's father. We give thanks that he was moved from the ICU to a rehabilitation area of the hospital and ask for continued improvement for his condition. We pray for Leah Martins and for others that we now lift up to you by name or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing. Watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. We pray for the Vacation Bible School and for Team VBS that will be exercising their gifts today through Thursday. Bless them. Bless all the teachers and helpers. Bless all the students. When we are weary, lift them up with your grace and your love and a sense of your purpose working through them. Hear us, O oh God. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all contexts we encounter. We pray for the family and friends of Richard Strobel who passed away recently. Lift them up, comfort them. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my will and make it Thine. pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in righteousness of Christ. To him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will the communion assistants please come up? those who are taking communion with the pre-filled packets, as well as those worshiping with us online, please take your bread, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let's start over here. Come. Come to the table of the Lord.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. 